Hi everyone, welcome back. I don't know if you've been watching the news out there, but if you think everything is just A-OK -okay and it, we're gonna see the markets explode higher and we're just in the next bull cycle, I gotta tell you, I disagree with you. And you're seeing a lot of issues around the world to tell us that most likely we're gonna see a real serious recession. Now, I thought we'd see the recession in Q2 or Q3. Obviously, we're still in Q2. There's still time to see the recession start in Q3, but the way it looks, and that was from what I said in the beginning of the year, now it looks to be postponed, most likely Q4 or Q1 of 2024. Why? Because the people out there spending money are spending it like there's no tomorrow. They're, they're using their credit cards to record that it is crazy how much money is being borrowed to continue to live their lifestyles like they did before inflation kicked in. You can't do that, but that's what they're doing. And you're seeing the power of inflation because of this demand continuing higher around the world. I always tell you, don't just concentrate on the US. There are other countries out there that are dealing with it. And that kind of gets us into what we're gonna to discuss today because you're seeing some real bad stuff happening and rates being raised. And we're gonna talk about the UK and some other things. Now, oh, I don't know if you see this, but <clears throat> for those who didn't see it, the Bank of England raised rates again to 5%, and they went up 0.5%, uh, 50 basis points, uh, and now they're saying they're going to go up to 6%. Their inflation, for those who have not been following this, is now right here. Uh, on Wednesday, showed, and this was uh, two days ago, 8.7% in May. Folks, you think it's bad in the U.S. when we're at uh, 4 What do you think it is over here? And when it's 8.7, folks, they are still fighting it and they have to get more and more aggressive. And that's the kind of stuff I worry about with stagflation around the world happening. And if that happens, how bad does it start to hit the U.S. and everything else? We're going to talk about this and a whole bunch more. But before we do, make sure you get that free share of C3 AI for the AI run. 238% up and all you got to do is click the Moomoo Moo link down below. You'll get that plus a hundred dollar cash reward coupon for a hundred off a thousand purchase. Five free stocks worth up to two thousand apiece. All you gotta do is put a hundred dollars in, but you gotta use my link below. If you do not use the link, you don't get all of that. And as for anybody 18 or older, but you can sign up for separate accounts for each person and you all get that. And then of course, take advantage of the Weeble, any amount of deposit using my link in the description, you'll get up to 12 stocks worth up to 30,600. And then of course, come on over to the Patreon, see what I'm buying and selling. And you can take advantage of the private discord if you get into the $19.99 a month or higher. So I would appreciate that. Now, a lot of things happening out there and I showed you the Bank of England, but they're not alone. You know, it's kind of like a, a, a tale of two cities. You got China cutting rates. So we have quantitative tightening in the UK, quantitative tightening in the US. You go to China, they're cutting key interest rates, hoping to kickstart their economy. You're seeing, like I said, two different things out there. You're seeing a lot of countries out there dealing with this inflation and it's the stagflation it's just not going away. It's starting to surprise rise on people. Is that going to happen in the U.S.? And that's my concern because people, you got to understand, I'm loaded to the gills with bonds and treasuries and triple leverage treasuries. I got all kinds of things going on. And I think the bond market gives me my best opportunity over the next year and a half, two years. And now I, I'll say it again. When the Fed permanently pauses, I'm planning on making hundreds of thousands of dollars. I'm just telling you this. I'll share it with the audience. I'll, sh I'll, I'll tell you everything I'm doing. And you can make up your mind if I'm crazy or if you think it's going to work and maybe do your due diligence and join me on that journey. All right. And so here you go. 77% chance of raising rates by 25 basis points in July. By the end of the year, December, they still expect... The odds are 80 something, 80% 80 that will still be at 525 to 550. It's one rate hike. And only about a 17.2% chance we're above that at this moment. But when you see surprise numbers coming out of the UK and other places, it worries me. Right now, I will say this it is not supply chain issues. If you hear anybody say that, to me, it, it's just bull, it's malarkey whatever malarkey is. And I got to tell you, uh, it, it's greedflation. Greedflation is where corporations want to maximize the shareholder wealth. And I understand that quite well. And that's what they do. 
And so they're out there passing on these, these increases to customers because they can. You're seeing record amount of profits from companies. Does that sound like they're struggling with supply chains and all these other issues? Or does it sound like they're increasing prices as much as they possibly can to make more money off of people and so they look good to their shareholders? Now, eventually, you can only bleed that rock dry so far. And guess what? At that point, all their profits are starting to crash down and then consumers just can't afford their products and services and we're going to hit that point in the u.s it's it's never been a question of if we will i'm telling you i am 100 in the boat that we're going to have a recession the only thing that's changed here is when and how aggressive do i want to be until we get to the point that i think it collapses in on itself with the retail people out there just putting money on credit cards like there's no tomorrow they don't even know that there's any dangers out there you got the vix collapsing down it's just it, to me it just doesn't make sense but there it is you got to play what you got you got to play the cards you're you're dealt and right now the cards being dealt are saying people are going to be willing to keep spending until they can't now i think and people always ask me when do you think it changes i do have a point is that october october when everybody has to start making those payments on their student loans is when the demand absolutely collapse uh will collapse in the u.s in my opinion and from October, November, and December, when they report Q4 earnings and everybody starts doing that in Q1 of 2024, folks, you're going to see a whole different ball game out there when it comes to how this market is. See if that makes sense. You have millions and millions, a lot of people out there with student loan de deferments right now. They're just not paying. They don't have to. And then all of a sudden, September, interest kicks in again, but they don't have to make that payment till October. In October, you got hundreds of dollars per payment for millions and millions of people who can barely even make their payments now for what they have in bills, now have another bill thrown on there. Ah, uh, you're going to see all kinds of panic and bad news out there, folks. That's when you're going to see the real pain kick in. And then with the Fed continuing to raise rates, in addition to this, oh, it just adds into a, just a cyclone of pain and misery for the U.S. economy. I think it starts in October. I'm figuring out exactly what I'm going to do to try to take advantage of this. Maybe it's some put options in a very serious way. Maybe it's just continuing with my triple leverage inverse with the SDAO because I do feel the Dow, for the most part, follows the economy and leading economic indicators as it should. TQQQ and SQQQ, uh, they're in a world of their own, led by the top seven. If you're bullish, take a look at FNGU. If you're bearish, take a look at FNGD. 10 stocks, they are part of the big seven, and you will see what I'm talking about. And that's one way to play that, but I'm going to be sticking to SDAO for now, and maybe some options on some SDAO, uh, maybe even on the Qs again as well. We made some money on the, uh, the call options on SQQQ. Uh, we'll see. It's, it's very crazy out there right now. But the main thing and the main thing is this and i'll bring this back up is that as you look at this and you go out let's just go all the way out we got all the way to next christmas so we're talking a year and a half away 18 months where do we see things and this is how investing really is i'll take my picture down if you want to know how to make money this is what the bond markets are seeing right now they expect to be at 375 to 400 basis points and remember, they expect this to go up at least to 525 to 550. Let's just say it goes to 525 to 550 in July. You're looking at about 18, not even 18 months later, 17 months later, then you would expect to be at 375. So you're, you're knocking off 150 basis points at that point in 18 months. And there is a chance that we could be even lower. There's a chance we could be higher. But for the most part, we can agree that there will be a few cuts next year. With that being said, and you see all this, you got to wonder how will bonds react or treasuries react when they start cutting? And we know, and I showed you charts on this, that once they start cutting and once we see the, the, the official pause and then cutting, that we usually see the treasuries off and running and you start to make a really nice appreciation on them. So I'm planning for that. I'm going to dollar cost average. If I do it for 17 consecutive months, by the end of that, I would expect to be up a very nice amount of money. From the day they cut the first time, I expect 
easily, and I, I always say from the pause, the official pause, 24 months after the official pause, I expect to be in the 15 to $20 range for TMF. And you'll see these times with like TLT here, the 20 year treasury, that you'll have times that you can go up. And you can see this right here, it's up about 50% roughly, and you'll have other moments like that. So if you don't want the non leverage, you want a little bit easier, uh, I'd say safer plays, there's 30%, you can do that. But I'm, I'm looking for a little bit more in terms of my gains. And you can see times like this where it goes up about 200%. And even littler times back there before 2015 where you see it run. And it gets up there about 130-something percent. Even here after that, then it falls. But then it goes back up. And you can see it up another 100%. So you have that. And even in 2021 here, folks, in case you weren't watching, look at this. It went up about, well, you can't get it right there, but about 35%. So you see these pop-ups. We're we are getting to that point once the Fed does what they need to do for us to get there. And that's what I'm kind of looking forward to. So I like those plays. I just wanted to bring that to your attention, let you know we're not out of the woods yet. There's a, a risk of stagflation. UK is suffering with a little bit of it. And how bad will it get in the US? Will greedflation take over? It's nasty out there, but I have a feeling that we're gonna be able to make bank. So if you haven't hit the subscribe and follow button down below and hit the bell for notifications, hit all, you need to, and then come on over to the Patreon and join me. You can follow along with the portfolios and the buys and sells, all that good stuff with the private Discord. Get that free share of C3AI and that $100 cash reward, uh, cash coupon, I should say, from Moomoo, where you get 100 off a $1,000 purchase. And and then, of course, the, the Weeble as well. I appreciate you stopping by. Let's get out there and make some money.